Big thanks to Moesta Barbecue for sponsoring this video. It's time to bust the biggest myth about butchers. The question that I get asked the most is where do you get your meat from? That's so simple, butcher of course. But somehow people seem to be afraid of their butcher. They seem to think butchers are grumpy old men with big scary knives. But it couldn't be further from the truth. And to prove it to you, I found this guy. This is Remco. He's a young guy, he's a friendly guy, he smiles, yeah, he smiles a lot. And he's not scary. You can ask him anything, literally anything, as long as it's not in English. And Remco is going to butcher this beautiful piece of veal. He's gonna take it apart, but the story started before that. Because this beautiful hind leg of veal has been sitting in the dry aging cabinet for 10 weeks. By dry aging the hind leg of veal, we essentially reduce the amount of juice that's in the veal, making the taste of the veal more concentrated. At the same time, the meat broke down and became more tender. The real butcher's trade is a high-skilled, high-trained job. So to get the best cuts of our hind leg of veal, I'm gonna let Remco do all the work for us. He runs one of the biggest shops in the Netherlands that serves the restaurant business. He's making short work of this hind leg of veal. And of course, he's doing it with a smile. I'm looking for three specific cuts because later on I want to grill for you a steak, a roulade and make a soup. Now of course I want to get all the cuts, but I'm looking for the larger cuts. We're not going to go all into the details, but I want the best ones. And here we have it, the end result, all of the pieces taken apart. Which of course we're going to start with the shank, because that's the bottom of our beautiful veal. It sits at the bottom of the leg and it has an insane amount of flavor. This is going to be perfect for our stock. And the reason that I love it so much for stock or soup is because of that flavor. The crazy amount of flavor that we can extract from that meat just makes our soup absolutely fantastic. And this is the cap top side. A beautiful piece of veal. It's nice and lean meat, although there's some fat in between and it's got some flavor to it. But the good thing is this is perfect for what we're going to make. We're going to make a roulade out of that, but we're going to trim it up a little further just so it's perfect. This is the thick flat. We like to use this for schnitzel. This is the most tender part. This is the rump. And this is what we're going to make the veal escallop from. In Dutch we call it the kalfsooster. And I love it very much. But not as popular as this. This is the picanha. Now we don't have the fat cap sitting on top of it because we didn't cut it out that way and it's dry aged now. But this thing is absolutely beautiful because it's been dry aging for 10 weeks. It's a veal picanha. It's gonna be really tender and it's gonna be flavorful. Even though it's veal, it's gonna be so amazing. And the final cut, the thick flank. This is absolutely beautiful piece of meat. Of course, it's a little bit tougher, but if you tie it up, roast it and slice it thin, it's going to be the most amazing thing you've ever had. And there it is, the proof that you don't have to be afraid of your butcher. He's a nice guy, he smiles. They're young dudes these days and they don't carry around big knives to scare you. Now in reality, these guys work really hard to get you the best kind of meat. So if you ever ask me again, where did your meat come from? There he is. And of course, there are other butchers that I work with as well, but these guys do an amazing job. Just go out and find your local butcher. And even better, these guys are looking for a lot of young butchers, so why not get into the trade yourself? I need you too. Go, become a butcher. Now that Remco turned the hind leg of veal into all these beautiful cuts, it's time that I'm going to show you what you can actually do with them. And to cook up all these beautiful pieces of meat, I'm going to use the Moesta Bandit Barbecue. This is how you fire it up. Start with a small fire made out of Kindle and then build it up with larger pieces of a good cooking wood like beech tree. I love that cast iron grill plate, so I'm going to use that as my cooking surface. On top of the fire, I'm going to set another grill grate because that's where I'm going to put my pan. This is my grandma's cast iron pan. I'm going to let it come up to temperature so it's ready for what comes next. Because I'm going to be grilling a steak, roasting a roulade, 
and boiling a broth. Let's start with our broth. I'm gonna put some goose fat in the pan. And when that's done, I'm gonna add some chopped carrots, onion, and celery. I'm gonna fry that up until it turns soft. Then I'm going to add the diced beef shank. I'm gonna give this some time to brown up. And once it's ready, I'm going to add water, fresh herbs, and let this simmer for a long time. For the roulade, I cut this steak out of the top side. I'm gonna sprinkle on some parsley, some garlic, some sage, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm gonna roll it up, tie it up, and sear it off on the cast iron plate. Once it's brown, I'm gonna set it to the side and let it slowly come up to temperature. And now it's time to start grilling our steak. Of course, I'm looking for the best piece, and I got my eye on that picanha. I'm gonna put a lot of goose fat on that cast iron plate, and I'm gonna drop my picanha straight on that. I'm looking for a beautiful brown crust while we slowly get that core temperature up to 52 degrees Celsius. Once that's done, I'm gonna let it rest, put a little bit of salt and pepper on, and it's time to feast. You love this thing, I love this thing, but who, you know who I love more? Uh, I know. M my butcher. Remco. <laughs> <laughs> go, go find your own Remco, so you can experience this. We got beautiful roulade, we got Ooh. picanha, dry aged for 10 weeks, roasted seared off on the grill. Here we go. Oh, mm. Mm. wow. That was really good. Mm. Mm. That is one tasty picanha. Amazing. Mm. Mm. The cast iron. It really gives a beautiful crunch on the outside of the meat. The butcher helped us greatly by providing us with the meat and of course, helping us dry age it. Now, if you wanna do all this, just go to your butcher, talk to him, befriend him, because he's just as interested in what you're cooking as you are. Trust me, no more grumpy old guys, no more stink eyes, just love for meat and sharing it. So. Go befriend your butcher, that's all I gotta say. I got a big tip for the people at home. If you really want to befriend your butcher, make pictures of your dishes. Show them. I thought you were gonna say something else. On that note, thank you for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, even Marker. And keep on grilling. I thought you were gonna say really something different. Show them pictures of... Come on, man. No, seriously. Who says things like that? You can't say that anymore. Mm. Mm. It's not like the good old days where you could say anything and it doesn't no. mean anything. Nowadays you got the memes. It was really an honest suggestion. Mm. Tony, it's totally out of control now. No. Sorry.